My name is Greg Whipple. I grew up a closeted gay man in Florida. As we all do, we all have rebellious stuff, but mine was more cultural rebellion. It was more music. It was more wearing weird clothes and having weird hair and things like that. But I would still go to church on Sundays. <laughs> so, but you know, my parents let me, let me do that as best as they knew how. I had a next door neighbor and we were best friends and that gave me a great perspective because it was the South and having Eric as my best friend really, really sort of buffered me from a lot of that. To this day, I'm super grateful for that relationship. He introduced me to uh, porn, porno videos. One thing leads to another, he gets sick and eventually getting, and I knew, I knew in the back of my mind what it was, but I was too scared of everything inside me to be there for him. Once he passed, I feel like I had this person up there that was on my side and that was like almost a guiding star for my own homosexual self who had not been, you know, set free yet. In junior high, I had another friend. He had a couple of X-rated novels. One of them was straight, the other one was gay. And I borrowed them, I took them, he let me borrow them, take them home. And I was reading them and my mom found one of them and she found the straight one. Because I hid the gay ones about as far as away as I could. <laughs> so that was sort of, again, me like, discovering that about myself and trying to not let anybody find out about it and praying constantly that God would take this, these feelings away from me, you know, going on youth retreats and dancing around the subject as much as I could. And, um, I'm sure there were people who, you know, knew or had, had a, had an idea about it, but, um, I just spent so much time and energy stuffing it down. I had not had any physical experiences up to this point. But when I went in college, I did a couple of little experimentation things, and that scared me back into the church. Um, I was a music major, but I also was very involved in the music program at my church. And I had a group of singers that I would sing with regular, and we went on a retreat. And my music minister at the time, who ended up coming out later in life. He kind of knew, he knew that I was gay. He knew, he knew what was happening, but he needed me to kind of say it. I actually ended up becoming <laughs> kind of a guidance counselor for a couple other guys in my youth group, my church group that were also dealing with that. It was cathartic because I was able to actually say, say it for the first time to another human being. But at the same time, I didn't really come out because I didn't accept it yet. To me, it was like somebody who has a problem with alcohol or has a problem with gambling or has a problem with whatever their sin is. And look how I'm not succumbing to my problem because I'm relying on God. And, you know, I would eventually find a wife and find and have kids and I would be happy. So I graduated college and I had gotten really heavily involved in a very high profile church on their praise team. And it was very high production value inner monitors, like all the big top players in town were go would play there. And it was great. It was a great place for me. But at some point I felt like getting called away from Orlando because I knew that, you know, there are other places out there that had higher ceilings, Nashville, New York, uh, LA, um, other places. And there were two opportunities for me. One was Seattle, one was New York. I went out to audition for both groups and I liked the Seattle group so much better. And so I ended up choosing to go to Seattle. That's about as far as you can get away from your skeletons <laughs> and still be in the United States, you know, Orlando to Seattle. So in some ways I struggled a lot financially because we, we didn't pay ourselves a whole lot of money. We toured, I was in this band and that's all we did. We didn't allow ourselves outside work because we all wanted to focus on what we were doing. And we recorded a couple of albums and paid ourselves very minimally. And so I kind of burned through 
all of the savings and IRAs and stuff that I had built up from my work in Orlando, but I came out of the closet. What eventually brought me out was I had a next door neighbor who was about 10 years older than me and we became best friends. He had cable. We didn't have cable. So I'd go over there and watch cable and he gets a phone call and he's given some my directions to his house. And I'm like, I'm overhearing this. And he's like, okay, I'm kicking you out. I'm like, okay, have fun. Thinking it was a woman. Turns out it was one of the guys that he had met at my Christmas party. And I already knew that my heart was already attached to him. So that was the first time I really felt like I was spiraling downwards into what would eventually be my freedom. I got up the courage to talk to him about it. And he proceeds to tell me that I, I don't want to do that with you because we're, I respect your friendship too much and this, that, and the other. So I felt very rejected and very like, I went home and listened to the Smiths for like three weeks. <laughs> um, eventually met a girl at my church. That was my last sort of chance to try to stay in the closet. We, we made out for the first time and I was just ready. And I just went in way too hard. <laughs> and she was like, oh God. And she freaked out and she's like, I don't think I'm ready for this. And so I kind of was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? You kids don't know. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was the dial-up internet days and, you know, you get more and more curious about things and you start doing searches and you start realizing, oh, I like, I, I like these kinds of men. And so then I learned about what bears were and I was like, oh, okay. So I found the bear rooms and started chatting in there. I had already kind of been checking out gay dating sites on gay.com or AOL chat rooms or whatever at the time. But I was not a bear. I was like skinny. I was still trying to be a rock star with my spiky blonde hair and my horn room glasses. And I went on this bear room site and met somebody and had sex with him that afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like, cool. Boom. And, and this, the sex was not good. But the intimacy was like, Oh, I get it. Finally, you know, after years and years and years of being scared, dating women, making them cry because I wouldn't go past second base, you know. When I came out to myself, I found this happiness and this freedom that I had never experienced, that I had not allowed myself to experience for my entire life. I was 31 years old. And so I was just like full of that notion. And I was like, I want to be happy in every area of my life. So that's when I realized I was not happy doing what I was doing career-wise in Seattle. That's when I sort of quit the band and came to Los Angeles. I had moved home to Florida for about six months to kind of get out of debt before settling in Los Angeles and um, living back with mom and dad. And I was out of the closet to myself and to many of my friends, but at the same time, gingerly walking around that subject because uh, I needed them to hear it from me. And I was working up the courage to eventually say that. But I was still very scared of it because of how they would react. I remember <laughs> we were having dinner and my mom breaks the silence. Well, I'm taking your dad to his first gay party on the 16th. I almost choked on my meatloaf. I was like, cool. <laughs> so she says this, they got invited. And so they said, they, they said, yes, they were going to go. And I started doing the math and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> like they're going to know, there's going to be a lot of people at that party that know that I'm out. <laughs> and the last thing I need is for some drunk homosexual to come up to my parents and go, we're so proud of your son. Yeah. You know, I needed to tell them they needed to hear from me. So I worked up the courage that Sunday, the party was on Tuesday and I took them back into the, into their office, back in the back room, guest room. 
I said, I have something to tell you. So I did. I told them. And they took it pretty well at first. I thought that my mom knew already because of the, some of the hints that she had dropped. And But then I remembered her finding that that straight porn novel and not the gay one. And I'm like, maybe that's why she's confused. It's funny how it all goes back to things. My dad pretty much locked himself in his room for a couple days. And my mom, I would go and touch her on the shoulder when she was on the porch and having breakfast and she would just burst into tears. My mom came in she's like, your dad has a friend who's a counselor that he knows from seminary. He has agreed to have um, a counseling session. And I was, at first I was like, no, I'm not going to go to therapy. Uh, this is, you know, she's like, no, it's not for you. It's for us. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll do that. So we did. We had a therapy session with this guy, and he was basically like, look, Greg is defiantly this person now, and now where do we go from here? I mean, I, I knew all along, like, okay, it took me 31 years to figure this out for myself. <laughs> My family, I need to give them time. I mean, everybody's going to process it differently, you know. So... I dated a few different guys and eventually I met my husband and he actually called my parents first to ask for my hand in marriage. And they said yes. And they ended up coming out to the wedding. We had it in a church. It was a great night of love and acceptance from both sides because I had a lot of gay friends there and a lot of my singer friends and then my family. And I was it was really important for them to see how much love there was in the room and I think they even contributed to that to the love too so that was a that was a big night I think my whole life I built up a defense mechanism of being arm's length with everybody that I was with even even people that I would let in there was still fear of getting hurt but at the same time I always knew that at some point I really wanted somebody now I have this person that I can connect on everything with so a friend of mine had visited LA from Canada that I had met. And I was like, what do you want to do when you're here? It's like, I have to see Joan Rivers fashion police. And we got a picture taken with her after the show. I think a year later she passed away. So the day she passed away, I posted that picture, you know, Joan Rivers. I don't remember what I said. So he liked the picture, but I had already kind of moved past that post. And a couple weeks later, I kind of went back as you do, you get bored. You're like, oh, I wonder who liked this picture. And so I went down the list and at the very bottom, there was like a group of people. And I was like, who's that? And he had a little green light next to his profile. So he was online and I was like, hello. <laughs> and he said hello back and we started chatting. He was living in San Diego at the time. And I had some friends down there. So, of course, I... I vetted him with my friends and he did the same and we, all of our friends gave the green light. So about a week after we started chatting, he was into powerlifting and there was a powerlifting competition in Long Beach. So he was like, I'm going to come up for this thing. Do you want to meet? So I said, sure. It was on a Sunday, you know, it was in a different city. If things didn't work out, we could just both go our separate ways. If things really worked out, Maybe we would get a hotel room. I, you know, we, we were just whatever. So it was a lovely, lovely first date. But we also both recognized that, okay, well, there's more to this than just let's get a hotel room. So it's almost 10 years now coming up. I've worried too much about this my whole life. You know, and it made me kind of go, well, maybe I, why did it, why did it take me this long? But then I'm like, you know, it, it all happened for a reason. I'm glad it took me a while to do it. I think had I come out at an earlier age, who's to say what I would have been like as a person? I, I like who I am. What happened to me when I was a kid had repercussions, you know? Some of it was malicious. Some of it was playful. Some of it was experimentation. But that all ended up molding my path. I can't say I could, I wish I could go back and not have that have happened to me because 
It's just all a part of life. I would just give the advice of like, don't read too much into anything. <laughs> because you never know what traumatic thing might happen to you. You can use to be some one of your biggest strengths. It's like people who are the ugly duckling, people who think I'm not pretty or cute, they develop another way to get attention. And that happened with me. Like I learned how to make people laugh. I also learned how to make people cry with my voice as a singer. That's where I, I found myself. And, you know, even with coming out, I thought I was not attractive at all. Until I finally had the right intimacy with somebody who happened to be a man and it clicked. And that's when I found some self-worth and I realized, oh shit, I'm attractive to somebody, you know? And I learned how to cultivate that more. And that was a huge, huge point in my life to find that finally. Oh uh -huh.